All right, welcome back to another review of the Perfect Grade GPL-1, and here we have one of our core fighters. This is actually the ground combat core fighter, and it's pretty nicely modeled, and it's the main core base that you'll be needing to build your um, ground combat version of the GPL-1. So, they give you a good deal of uh, detail stickers for this thing, and it holds together moderately nicely, minus a bit of wobble here, but you really won't see that displaying it on the ground. Um, so it comes with a fair bit of articulation, and also I apologize for recording on wood, it's just my black background blended in too much with this, so anyways, for articulation, uh, it's going to be for closing this thing up, you'll pop these open, the back fins that is, and you'll just push them down into here and forward in and your back fins have now officially disappeared so no more back fins um, next would be taking off your missiles and one thing word of warning for you guys um, the missiles are put onto the runner very very loosely and mine snapped when taking it off. I'm very thankful that it didn't break anywhere beyond that or else I wouldn't have been able to apply it to the kit. But you take off your little missiles here and just flip it over to the uh, bottom of the jet, take these off, and fold these down. So we'll then move this down and pull this off just for safety. So the next bit is kind of tough. Again, another word of warning, this thing broke for me too and there's the leftover piece. So anyways, for the wings you bring this piece all the way down and this piece you bring, you bend over and okay yeah, you bend it in a bit like in here, but it doesn't really want to move for me right now. And because it was painted, it just refuses to move. So, uh, that didn't make it any better, sorry. Anyways, so, do the same thing for this wing. Ah, bloody hell. That's one annoying thing I find about this kit. While I do laud there, uh, them making this a very technical kit. They also really kicked in the face um, ease of use and ease of transformation to the point where it's actually quite irritating and really just makes me want to slap whoever designed this in the face. Anyways, so now that we have our wings folded in, just take this other piece and bring it in like the other one with um, your beam saver ports kind of bent out. Next is this part. Take it, pull it out, and uh, there will be a bit of bend here, but there's still more to go. Bend here and pull out a bit more, and this thing bends down in, sorry, that was off camera. This bends down into two areas. So, you then take this piece and off, close this up, forward, forward, and bring these down so that they fit flush like that. So, put this back on, and bring it down. And here we have our core base. Minus, you know, flipping these things up. And there we have a condensed core fighter. The other core fighter, right here, follows pretty much the same design as the other one, minus the extra vernian parts, and is actually a bigger pain in the neck to transform. The removing uh, parts is the same, closing these up, except uh, added sections you have to 
kind of wiggle these open and bend them like that. And this part here will bend down with the rest of this condensing down and this part uh, goes down while these pop up. You'll see a full transformation of this part uh, when I do the transformation part of the video. And another word of warning, there's a lot of these for this kit, isn't there? Um, be a bit careful with this joint because mine broke right off. Sure it still stays in, stays in here, but it's still pretty loose and kind of annoying to have it constantly falling over. So, I guess for final thoughts with this kit, I like it and I hate it at the exact same time. I like the fact that it's Bondi's uh, biggest kit, you get the most uh, for your money with it, but there's just too many negative things about it. The weight issues with the full Vernian, parts easily breaking with this thing, this doesn't feel like a perfect grade to me, it feels more like a master grade. Kinda like if Bondi took the MSK Unicorn version uh, and just made it 1 to 60 scale. That's all I feel about, that's all how I feel about this kit. It doesn't feel like a true perfect grade. So, if you really really like technical detail with your kit, especially when doing inner frame, go ahead and spend the $300. If not, really just give this perfect grade a pass. I'm not all that fond of it. But with all that negativeness aside, I had told you all I would tell you what my next project is and let's just take a little journey over to my computer. So beautiful little whiteboard. Oh look, it's a beautiful day outside. Okay. So here's my computer. And here's my next project. It's the E2046 uh, MSN042 Nightingale resin kit. I have been looking for Nightingale for a very long time to go with my high new Gundam. And I just friggin' love this thing. I'm not gonna get the G system uh, revision of this kit because I don't like the decals that come with it. So I'll just be sticking with this one. It'll take me about maybe a week and a half to get the capital I need to pay for this $300 kit, but I feel it'll be worth it. And as an added bonus, I'm actually going to be pre-ordering this thing too. It's the uh, Evolve Conversion Kit for the 1 to 100 New Gundam. I'm going to be buying a Sazabi resin, uh, kind of like the one that Vegeta, uh, Vegeta got, sorry I forgot the rest of your name, it's been a long day, but um, it's not exactly the same one. It's um, actually, it reproportions everything, but it does a lot more detail on the assorted parts, which I really like about this kit. So I'll be picking up that sometime later, but that plus this thing to go right next to it will look very, very nice in my collection. So I guess that's it for this review, and I'll see you all in maybe about a month or so once I'm done with the Nightingale. See y'all then.